Yeah, I appreciate it, Zoe. I know I'm happy to be here, and I know Hurix is happy to be on a broadcast where the average age isn't just half of his, so <laughs> right time for everybody. That's messed up, man. They can already see the hairline. You don't have to go ahead and just make it obvious, man. I said, I put it out on Twitter. I said, be nice to me, so just be nice. No chance. No chance, Hurix. I got more people to make fun of you in front of now. That's tough. That's a, that's a tough yeah. one. Let's, let's go ahead and let's dive into this. Let's focus in on this first match here. And of course, Ilios is going to be map number one here in match three. Again, Rain versus Saints. This is a nice map. I mean, we just heard the desk talking about it a little bit. I, I think that this one could provide a little bit of interest for us here today because this is a map that we're certainly destined to see a lot less of what we saw in qualifiers, which was a lot of Reinhardt. And we're probably going to be seeing a little bit more of Winston Ball here. Yeah, and I think that brings up the thing that Danny was talking about earlier, right? That potential Mikey Dong hack showdown that Dude, come on, who's not hyped for that? <laughs> I know I am. I mean, that's definitely something I'm looking forward to, especially with how much conversation has been driven around that player throughout the offseason. And now seeing what this team has been capable of already, I mean, certainly speaks volumes to where they could be, you know, down the line. Once we see that actual official season start, this is already just such a great look for them to open things up. But as we get diving in here, we're going to be starting things up on Ruins and I already like the looks that I'm seeing. Of course, one thing to note though, and I'm I'm curious to see if they do want to stick with this. And I imagine that they, there is some potential that they will vigilante on the Anna. Whereas Saints, mm -hmm. I imagine they're going to be going with that Lucio Kiriko. One thing that I think we do need to mention before we kind of dive into this actually door is the fact that Squid, very known for playing the Kiriko, was picked up for a few different rosters actually because of the nature of their skill set with Kiriko specifically. Saints, though, they used to have CJ on this team, and this is a very different Saints because of that loss as well. Yeah, I mean, look, if Tree was was him for contenders, CJ was kind of also. So also Saints will be, yeah. feeling, <laughs> will be feeling that loss for the time being, but it's Rain who takes an initial engagement, and Tree put six feet under. Already like the opening here. Rain just right off the pile driver. That's one thing that you don't often see with this type of composition is just right off the neutral with the ball composition. You see that pile drive come in and Saints just were unprepared to accept that dive pressure. Again, these neutral fights with the ball tend to be a little bit more difficult to actually pull off, but you can see again, the synergy for the rain is definitely there. Yeah, I mean, they're 100% on the same page and Lip always a threat throwing and damage building up towards that EMP. It's dangerous, but Saints continue to walk in nevertheless. Nobody's been found quite yet, but as the ball rolls in, slams onto the back line, no value has been found. It's still neutral. Tree doesn't really have sight lights to work with though. Slides in, looks for the shot, it's Chio going down first. Saints decide to strike following that first pick, but they're not done yet. There's some health bars still yet to be chipped down for the rain. Yeah, dealing with dong hack still gonna be a difficulty they finally do get that kill they will get the flip here to follow as well but you can see one thing that saints are trying to do here is apply that pressure to the back line They're trying to get up into vigilante and chio's face and you see the swap actually coming out from vigilante as well that's onto the kiriko it's gonna be a little bit more elusive on this pick certainly a little bit less diveable than you would see from the anna who can only sleep dart one player now also you get that suzu as well for the rain that's going to help them a ton in protecting not just the back line but also dong hack lip stalker as well mine's out to start things off saints being zoned from point tree is in a very dangerous place right about now but does manage to find his way out as well sliding onto the high ground is able to dive with mikey taking down chio that means that the beat and the katsuna rush for saints are completely uncontested and it's only going to take one of those two to finish the fight off or I'm wrong entirely. Rain believe in this fight for one reason or another. EMP into all of them, and it's worked! Vango goes down! There's no sound barrier in tow now for Saints! This thing's been flipped on its head! Oh, just like that, we're gonna see an investment from the Saints, actually. They're gonna recommit to this. They think that Vega might be able to come back, give them the sound barrier, and allow them to pivot this fight back into their favor. They're looking for a momentum shift. Vega drops the beat, just gets it in time to save Mikey, but Mikey's out of the fight. He already used the leap outward. Saints were not on the same page. Not everybody believed in Vega the way that Vega believed in himself right about now, but at least they're putting extra percentage up on the point. They dive back in and they'll get a recontest. That is until their Winston goes down. With Mikey out of the picture, Rain should be able to tackle this one. Yeah, this should be a flip, but you have to give credit to Saints here because Absolutely. they're sticking around. I mean, they're still sticking around. Mikey is already back up off of respawn. It's been that long, so a lot of credit for the Saints to get up to a really nice percentage here. 
and Rain looking to battle back into this one. They're going to be without the EMP for now, but the thing that they can, they can rely on is that sound barrier. Chio still does have that, so Rain should be able to pack a big punch here and back it up. Now, this is they don't just find the first pick off mines, but it will just be zoning for Donghead. He's done a great job thus far. All right. Rain take the lead now. Both of those support ults coming up. They got to deal right. with Tree, though. Tree did so much work in the qualifiers. It's been a little bit quiet so far in this matchup here. Not able to find a kill just yet against the Rain. I think it's crazy just how much you can see the Rain respecting that overclock. But once it's over, oh, it's their time to shine, baby. Kitsune Rush, EMP, the whole kitchen sink's being thrown in. Rain believe this is the final fight, but can Saints fit one more in? Uh, it's going to be a tough call, actually. I mean... Mikey's not on the wrecking ball here, so it's going to be difficult. King also was the last to die for the Saints, so getting a touch is going to really just fall on Vega if he can get there in time and just not going to be even remotely in the area code. And they even kill Vega as well, so no <laughs> shot. But not a bad start here for the Saints. Yeah. And, and you remember, I mean, Rain coming into this match was certainly touted, touted as one of, if not the best teams in this tournament, one to beat, one to look out for. So Saints winning a couple of decent fights, getting their bearings, not, not a bad start. No, I mean, you and I talked a little bit in the past about the different mindsets that contenders teams have had coming into this tournament. And Saints were very much of the mindset that they wanted to prove that they could play up against the big dogs. Well, I, it's pretty soon in, but they have found themselves the biggest dog of them all. So if there was anywhere to prove yourself, it's here. There was, there was that conversation that we actually had in the interview too, where they were talking about, you know, they're looking for a top four, top five kind of situation. But that also was with the disclaimer that that would be if they had their support line. Unfortunately, they don't have that same support line, but Squid has been doing very He's well good, so man. far throughout this tournament. And Squid obviously known for being that Kyrgyz player. That, that skill set has proven to be very valuable for the Saints. Now you see them rolling out once again, this time actually matching with King and Tree, bringing out the Sombra and Tracer. They're going to lose Vega early, but definitely something to kind of look out for as they're, I mean, almost mirroring this rain composition. Obviously, they have that Kiriko still for Squid. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a big matchup to play because Tree and King, I mean, solid on these picks as they are. You know, you, you think of Tree, you think of that Sojourn, but when you think of Lip and Stalker, you think of Sombra and Tracer, man. Like, this is, you're playing up against them on their favorite heroes. This is as tough as it gets. Oh, it looks like Tree is actually getting pincered right now under uh -oh. fire. Stalker chasing him out. Tree is not going to have anything. They're just going to take him out for free. I mean, he went in that room for a spa and found himself on the wrong end of beat stick. I don't know what to tell you, man. It's a rough fight for Saints who were already down one going in. Push back to spawn, but at least it's only 20% on the point. Got to give a lot of credit for that play, actually, to Chia, who went all the way over towards the spawn and actually pushed the tree yeah. into the fight. So great job from Rain and especially that back line. You did, I mean, that's one thing that the Tracer has to do in these compositions is mark those Tracers. And Chio is making an aggressive play to do that time and time again. Saints finally get to make their way out of spawn, though. Set up a proper dive. The problem here is, I mean, they do not have an ultimate insight on the horizon or anywhere in their near future here. This is going to be a really tough one. And if Rain can get it for cheap here by just dropping the nano boost, it could get even worse. But it looks like they might want to EMP going into this. Yep, Lip immediately pops. It hits all of Saints, and there wasn't even a chance. Nano didn't have to use her any. This is, this is a rough one here. I saw King actually kind of working his way around that backside, going all the way up along the back stairs, coming up to the top. I mean, they were scouting. They were looking to try to get some information before they started that fight. Unfortunately, they just didn't see Lip, who was stealthed right by where King actually walked through. But nonetheless, it's 75% here. So things have to turn around quickly for Saints, and they are coming up on some ultimate. So maybe an opportunity here. Coming up on them is not the same thing as having them. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I think Vegas figuring that one out very quick. That 10% difference made all the difference in the world. And oh god, we're committing. Oh god, we're committing here. Uh, I mean, they have to. It's final fight. Saints had to go for it, but all of them failing to get ultimates up before the critical moment came to fruition. Atlanta Reign have shown Saints what it truly means to be at the top of the Overwatch League. Yeah. Saints came into this tournament with some confidence, but they're going to need a little bit more than that to be able to contend with a team like Rain. It's, it seems at least from the start. Of course, this is first to two, so backs against the wall here now for Saints, and this is a situation that they don't typically find themselves oh. in. These players coming from contenders are at the absolute pinnacle, the upper echelon of the T2 talent, so they're not really caught, you know, that far back ever. Not like this. Look, I mean, the last team to put them under any pressure like this was Trick Room, man. And now it's just immense. It is crushing 
Granted, you know, we could go the contenders route and call control a Mickey Mouse map type and then just like go second. But in a best of three, I'm not sure you can say that as much. You kind of need that first map win. It's pretty critical. Amongst those first maps, though, I do think Elios was like, it, it's, it's a rough one yeah. for Saints, right? It is a prime bit of real estate for Stalker and Lip to run that Tracer Sombra. And Saints just don't really have that mirror in them, at least in terms of DPS. When you, like I said, when you think of Tree, when you think of King, King's got that Sombra, but Tree definitely more that traditional hit scan player and matching up against somebody like Stalker was gonna be a hard time. But well, you know what's gonna be even harder? Taking your eyes off the rest of this match, ladies and gentlemen, we're sending you guys to a quick little break. So keep your eyes glued to your screens and your butts firmly planted in your seats. We'll catch you after this.
beginning. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you got done what you needed to do and found the snacks that you needed because this thing, well, it's actually looking kind of quick right now. It's, it got gobsmacked <laughs> first map, but we know what the plus side to that always is here. At least it was over quickly for Saints. Yeah, a little bit of mercy from the rain, but I, I don't think that they're going to be holding on to that mercy uh, all too much because, of course, we're going to be going into a map number two where I think some of that punishment might still be coming down the direction of Saints. And I did talk to Saints before this a little bit, and they did kind of... I mean, there was there was a little bit of a notion that this was going to happen. But hey, there's always that potential that moving into a map number two, they can find a way to turn things back around. But there is some movement before we do actually dive into that. We did see a, a little bit of a swap up here. So of course, Hawk coming in, Fielder also coming in. So Chio out, Donghak out, Hawk, the previous player of the match from earlier, back into the mix. And this is an interesting lineup here, especially with that back line. I mean, this screams to me that they want to put the paint on Saints, right? <laughs> You're coming to a fielder vigilant. If I got two supports in the league that could frag, it's these two, man. Putting them both in on Blizzard World up against Saints. I think they're really trying to throw a lot of damage their way. And up against Saints, that's like a fantastic way to throw them off. We got to keep in mind during the Pro-Am qualifiers, Blizzard World was kind of Saints' map. They won a lot of games here and looked really great on it. Yeah, big time. And of course, you know, looking at that next map as well, I think that is, I mean, a big reason why we see them making this swap is because we're going to be going into a map number two that is going to be Blizzard World. And Blizzard World, I mean, when we look, when we look at the way that that was played throughout the course of qualifiers, there were so many different looks that we wound up seeing in that uh, qualifier across both of the regions that we actually saw. Obviously, we've really been focusing on a lot of the NA contenders teams so far in the group stage right now as the EMEA teams are in those other groups that we haven't touched on just yet. And Blizzard World, across those regions, I mean, there was a ton of disparity in terms of how that approach looked. We saw teams doing a lot of stuff with Rhyme. We saw those ball comps uh, coming out. We saw Winston comps. And now we're seeing certainly a lot more of the Ramatra uh, or the Tempo Rush kind of composition coming through. And it seems like a lot of teams are really putting a little bit more focus on that as well. Yeah, and I think that's going to be pretty critical, but also important is Tree coming into this map. We saw him absolutely start taking over yesterday on the sojourn and expect more of that today he needs to come into play though because when you're talking about cards that saints have up their sleeve none more do they invest in than this player man i mean the, the guy's barely he's not even overwatch league yet age wise so it, you've got to invest in him but the consistency has also got to be there for him yeah, big time. I think one thing that we have seen so far in this series is the fact that, I mean, we just haven't seen much from Tree just yet. As we go and get ready to jump into Blizzard World here for Mario right. 2. Yeah, I mean, this, he's basically got to be on fire or there's not a huge amount of hope, I think, right now for the Saints. But if he can light up, and I imagine that he can and will, then this could be a little bit different of a game on our hands. Yeah, I think it's interesting the effect that you see of losing CJ has on Saints as well, because they they used to have like two mega pop off players, granted kind of all star players on amongst contenders players on this roster, but it was Tree and CJ and it was like 50 50 for both of them. So you'd usually have somebody popping off, but now Tree's got to find that warm up earlier. Yesterday, it took him a little bit, took him a map to get warmed up, but once he was ready to go, boy, was this guy fragging. <laughs> and uh, hopefully the same thing could be said for today. Yeah, and I'm, I'm actually curious to see Saints actually starting up onto this uh, Winston composition because one thing that we will note right now is the fact that they do have that Ana. So a little bit of some emphasis here mm -hmm. into, first of all, being able to go for those sleep darts and kind of protect the back line a little bit, protect, I mean, really themselves, squid actually, <laughs> to a degree, but also <laughs> a little bit of a potential for enabling as well, right? I mean, Mikey could have some of those nano boosts thrown into him that could help them combat in a brawl kind of setup or, you know, if they're going against dives, could really kind of be oppressive in some of these fights, or you could throw it on the tree or King. We have seen that as a look with the Ana in tow of more than a few times back in the qualifiers. Uh, another interesting look we're getting though, Hawk on the D.Va. We've seen it a lot as a theoretical counter to the Winston, at least amongst contenders teams. It hasn't really worked out that way, but I trust that Atlanta Rain know what they're doing. A dive in from Saints though, cut short by a hack. Squid falls and all of a sudden all that peel that we had kind of set up to be at Squid's side is just null and void. I mean, they have been stomped in every direction. Rain, hold strong. Yeah, I think this is why we were so excited about Vigilante and Fielder being in, this, in the mix together, right? Is the fact that they can bring together. I mean, you could maybe consider it double flex. 
because BAP is such a hard thing to quantify in that regard. But the fact it's that a lot of damage. That's exactly. all that matters, man. There's so much pressure. There's so much lethality with this composition. Obviously, a lot of people did see, you know, in a pretty early look at that Doomfist composition. This is, I think, a progression from that. Very similar in the way that you have that pressure, that heavy damage, a lot of lethality. And that's what they're gonna try to leverage in this matchup versus Saints, try to catch Saints off guard. And it's very easy. You only have to be off guard for, I mean, all of half a second to lose your entire health bar to this team composition. And as Saints set themselves up to go in, they do manage to force back Lip. So Rain really wanna play pretty careful entering into this fight. And Saints are the ones not playing careful enough. Squeak gets disconnected, doesn't follow Mikey into the bubble soon enough. And the dive not quite as coordinated as Saints may have wanted. Rain. All they've had to do this match is just hold their space. They've hardly had to make a dive of their own. Yeah, one thing I'm enjoying watching as well, Rain in the back line, you see Lip just kind of diving in towards Squid and whoever is kind of left over from when Saints try to press mm -hmm. forward, Rain is just gobbling them up basically from every single angle. So watch to see how Lip approaches this and if King or Tree can actually match that rotation from Lip. And it looks like they do actually push him back this time around. Yeah, the difficulty is now that you're playing into all five ultimates. I mean, this is everything. A smorgasbord at the fingertips of Atlanta Rain. And they start off taking down Mikey, having only used that pulse bomb. Cart reaches the end of B. Saints still lacking an answer to the pressure that Rain have put on them. You see that EMP at the ready as well. Rain just absolutely just, I mean, Oh man. Grass meat lawnmower is kind of what we're <laughs> witnessing here. <laughs> Rain is still going to have just so many resources available for this next fight. And you look over at the other side and Saints, of course, they're going to be building up to five ultimates in this next fight, right? And we do see Squid back, of course, on the comfort of the Kiriko. They obviously like this for this Winston composition as well. It makes a lot of sense. But even with all those resources, still, Lip could turn this fight. Vigilante could help turn this fight as well with the... There you go. Yep. It, it's a great reaction, and King just dives too far in, is unable to exit, not able to translocate out. Rain again, don't need to engage the fight. They just win it off their own back. You're not going to throw in a Kitsune Rush. Saints want this thing to stop here and now. Four versus five, though. Look at man, it, it, it's a tall order. Atlanta have literally not lost a single player yet on this map, and that trend's only going to continue. Adore, that's four ults for one transcendence effectively. I mean, at this point, <laughs> oh my God. we see the pulse bomb as a tipping point, I guess. But at that stage, I mean, Rain had already won the fight. Stalker is just making sure that they get a little bit more time bank by throwing that one out at the time that he did. And you Could see the swap see the now from King as well over to the Genji. I mean, this is not something you see Saints doing. Just these kind of really like backs against the wall type swaps. This could be the, the perfect push. This, they could not lose a player. It's not about it if you reach the end of the map. It's whether or not they can do it without seeing green in the left side of the kill feed. And it's only gray, baby. Rain, keep going. Four minutes on the time bank. I mean, when was the last time you saw this? We see Saints. I mean, they're not even going to be able to get out and touch. Four minute time bank for Rain. Oh they ran the Saints over. This is, this is reminiscent of the King's Row push from yesterday out of Rain. I mean, they are setting the any percent record for pro-am right now Initiating okay lip okay okay <laughs> you, have let, back. you have to let them know dude you uh. will you will notice that uh saints are not firing back that is something that you do see a lot from the na teams i mean we got a little bit of a taste of it from trick room yesterday um, but Saints, notably a little bit more quiet today. We'll do, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> I, I think it's just that they lack the room to talk right now, and, it, and Rain are, are just trying to usurp them before that happens. I do still expect Saints, I mean, I, I know a lot of people are going to watch this, and, you know, they're going to derive some opinions from it, right? Yeah. But I do want to kind of levy some expectations or some maybe adjusted expectations after this match finishes Dude, the, the, no matter the contender what sock market has been just up and down yeah, <laughs> yeah. about as volatile as it gets yeah. but that's, that's fine we, we got three contender teams playing today we'll solidify things right now though it's all about the rain and this is i think just proving how good of a team they are because not only is it doing it here but it's been on every single composition and as they roll out on defense against they look to team. put out the exact same thing <laughs> against every team yeah contenders or not yeah saints they're gonna be coming out swinging as hard as they possibly can here. They do have King back into that Genji pick once again here. I mean, looking obviously just to try to see if they can solidify just some early kills, dashing into onto someone, pile driver, tree connects on the tracer as well, and see if they could just get an early kill, just establish some kind of momentum. 
maybe onto someone like Vigilante, who should be exposed in the back line if they can get there. And I think that's the big problem is that Hawk and Lip and Stalker have been doing such a good job of just keeping that back line insulated and protected just from rotations, not even the dive. They can't even get to the dive. <laughs> Vigilante and Fielder are in Narnia. If object permanence is a thing you struggle with, they're simply not in this game for Saints. Like, catching vision on them is, is not doable. And as they sit back here trying to dive again, you can see, like you said, Stalker, Hawk, and Lip bodyguarding these two supports. Vigilante and Fielder have got to feel on top of the world right now. Their jobs could not be easier. At this point, they're just taking pot shots. I mean, finally, they do you see a connection, actually. King diving in alongside Mikey, and they are going to be able to get the kills. The backline for Rain is gone, and so is Hawk. Let's go! They got Elims! Go team! All right. It's messed up, man. Look, I got I to gotta give them credit where I can. That's a fight win. That's the best you can ask for. No, that's messed up, man. Saints are better than that. You got to give them credit. They're going to be able to take this first objective. Or perhaps it looks like Rain might actually be able to go for a contest. Nope, not going to be able to get Lip into position in time. But they still do have the option to go for a little bit of credit here towards the EMP. And Lip now at 96%. They can yeah. use that in this next fight. And that's going to be something that they're going to be they're going to be looking to open the fight with if they can here. Saints... I mean, if they can get a, a nice little redirect, it's going to have to come off the back of Squid, really trying to set the tone with that. Ooh, I don't like the positioning here for a Oh, he got my checked! Okay. That's huge. That allows them the space to push this cart should they want to. It's difficult, though. I mean, they know what they're walking into. But if the TMP goes off, then they're going to get held in the choke. You have to go now if you're Saints, and they do. Throw in the Kitsune Rush. Implication Matrix comes out from Fielder. The <laughs> Fielder, don't look so safe anymore. Mikey's picked up one. Saints storm forward after Lip got found out earlier. And just because the gig was up, Rain are put on the back foot and instantly tackled down to the ground. Saints doing just such a good job of, again, working off of that momentum. That's kind of what the key change with this setup is all about. Just bringing in King on that Genji, having Mikey going back over to the ball as well. And now they just have that explosion of damage that they could just throw at any one from Rain at all. As soon as they find someone isolated or they isolate someone themselves, they can just dive in on it and try to expose that. And it has been something that has been critical for their success so far. And I think for Saints, I, I know both you and I, we're kind of hoping it continues. We want to see more of this. Not quite worked yet. Oh, Fielder is down. No Suzu, no Immortality Field to keep him up. Vigilante as well. I mean, I think it's worth noting, as, as good as Atlanta Rain are making this comp look, it is, in one word, fragile. Oh, yeah, definitely. Especially that back line, so squishy. I mean, again, playing isolated, they're all the way in the back there. It's so hard to protect them, especially with Lip and Stalker wanting to play forward, wanting to apply pressure themselves as well. And you see Lip, you know, doing his best to make sure that they can mitigate the value that Mikey is getting. But that's the thing about this Wrecking Ball right now is that it is, I mean, a lot easier to, to survive on. And Mikey, as good as he is, can also really cause some chaos, cause some disruption that's difficult to contend with, even if you're ranged. Uh, this fight's tricky though, you have the Kitsune Rush going up against the EMP and Lip did exactly what you were talking about earlier. EMPs the back line away from the front line, that little bit of dissonance between Mikey diving in and Squid and Vega getting there makes all the difference in the world. The question is, was it enough? I mean, there's a pick going down onto Hawk, but I, I certainly don't think it's going to level this fight for Saints. Yeah, I think Hawk losing his mech isn't, I mean, it's, not, it's just not the, the victory card that saints really need in this moment they do of course have plenty of time to work with here just over two minutes they are building towards that blade that could be something that if king is fast with this one he could get it before vigilante does arrive at the transcendence which would be the main concern here for the saints if they're looking to try to get some lethality out of that ultimate especially given the fact that they don't have the Ana, they don't have that extra damage or the tankiness that the nano boost would provide so they really want to arrive at that before vigilante gets there with his transcendence. Otherwise, Rain could easily mitigate I mean, King's value. He, he's on track too. 98%. Saints are just waiting for that ultimate. That's the go button. It's all about timing. 
The tension building. If you can see Vigilante and Fielder are just backing up. They know what's coming. They know what's on the other side of the battlefield. They didn't want to be nowhere near it. Immediately to the back. They continue towards their spawn room and it works. King just can't close the gap to get on top of the back line of Rain. The ult tracking too prominent. The ultimate's now available for Rain as well. They're gonna have so much more counterplay when it does happen. And that's what's so difficult about this section of the map for this Saints composition as well. I mean, this is just as much of a, a, a compositional struggle as it is anything else here, is that you have to close that distance. I think one thing that could be a silver lining perhaps is Saints still have maybe two fight opportunities left and they will have every single one of their five ultimates. Unfortunately for them, Rain are gonna be in the same situation. Yeah, I mean, and they could just preempt everything with the EMP. Hawk gets an E as well on a tree's fall drop. Oh my God, King can't get up the wall. It's disaster. They're dropping their spaghetti everywhere. Saints are struggling to pick it up, shoving it back into their pockets and maybe they can stabilize following this transcendence, but it's gonna be damn hard. Rain send it back and say, Saints understand, you know what, we can't get this one. We got one more shot. And I think Rain are just feeling so happy that they were able to go pretty much one for one on all of those ultimates trading out. Now they have that pick as well. That's at a critical juncture here. 20 seconds left on the clock. Hawks still having ability to just go ahead and self-destruct, get that health reset, and they can actually catch Vega out. Yeah, they will. Saint, yeah, Saints are just sitting so close to the cart waiting for this. You can tell they're getting so antsy in moments like this. They're only going to be coming in this one with three, maybe four players. Hawk, thirsty for blood, dives into him, trying to catch a piece of something. But I don't think it's going to matter much anyways. Atlanta Rain put on a show. Speed run. Saints coming from contenders. Reminder, setting the second fastest time we have ever seen on Blizzard World. And on top of that, without losing a single player on their own attacking side, it literally does not get better here. Yeah, that, I mean, that was a masterclass of Blizzard World here. And I, I mean, we kind of talked about it a little bit as we were dive, uh, you know, getting started here on Blizzard World, the excitement that we saw with those subs that we saw coming in from the rain. Obviously there was a very clear picture, a very clear indication of what their strategy was coming in. They were looking for that lethality. They're gonna get it from their back line just as much as they're used to getting it from their DPS line and their tank as well. And it really worked out. I mean, it's obviously something that a lot of teams are struggling to deal with when they play against rain but it's going to be continuing here even for the contenders teams that have actually been playing very well throughout this tournament so far yeah, and i think a large part of that issue they offered up was lip dude this guy was a machine in shutting down dives and i think the biggest thing that i saw from him that's so hard to do on sombra because a lot of the composition was built around protecting vigilante and fielder and shio right but lip was very delicately balancing harassing the back line and also saving that manual hack for when the dive came in to disrupt it alongside the defense matrix of hawk and being able to weigh those two options and choose right literally every single time is incredible you see the hack here onto the tracer right when the dive comes in choosing to do that as opposed to harassing the opposing back line this time harassing aggressively into that genji getting a kill there his decision making was prime it is a perfect reason to give this man player the match yeah that's what separates you know the the good from the truly great sombras there's so much decision making that happens and lip obviously just doing such a fantastic job also some big emps that helped Rain actually established themselves in fights where they were able to be a little bit more efficient, trading some of those one for one and even getting out. You saw in that last fight as well, going five for four on the ultimates. That just sets your team up for success. That's a big reason and one of the many reasons why this team just continues to prove that they are the one to really keep your eye on. Look, man, I mean, I'm excited about this because now we've got Lip running around on one side and on the other side of this group, we've got the Sombra of the world self-proclaimed <laughs> in Pumion Trick Room. And I honestly, like, as far as contender Sombras go, I don't think there's anybody better than Pumion. Right now, Lip is the man to talk about Atlanta. Take it over Saints, two to zero. The desk will have this one to break down after a break.
been announcing our Calling All Heroes programs in 2023, both the Challenger Series and the Speaker Series. And to learn more about all of that, head on over to our website, callingallheroes.gg. This is where you can find everything you need to know, how to register for the next tournament from March 24th to April 18th, or you can just head on over to Discord and join our community there. We're lucky to have you with us everywhere. Now, we have a match to break down and the Wild Saints did win a few fights uh, on Ilya's Ruins. After that, man, Atlanta turned it up. They went double flex yeah. support of Blizzard World and they just, I think they just tried to speed run it at this point. They tied for the second fastest attack. First place, uh, by the way, held by they themselves as well, as you can see right there. Here are the wow. numbers. Uh, that was their uh, game in 2020 against the Gladiators, which earned them the first and fastest uh, round on Blizzard World. And uh, yeah, we're just trying to beat themselves. Now, uh, thank you so much for digging that up for us, Noah. While this was a one-sided affair, I felt like it was still fun to watch, though. If only to see Hawk on that D.Va again, Lemon. I know, and this was such an interesting choice, and I think not a lot of people expected this just because Ramatra and Doomfist and other specialties, not really Hawk can play at all. But Hawk's diva choice was specifically to be an anti-dive measure. You see Mikey in the lineup, you know he's going to play one of two things, Winston or Hammond, we weren't sure what. But Diva is such a good hero for these small dives because, uh, you know, she doesn't have the mobility range of Winston or Ball, but Diva is especially a solid counter to Winston, which is what Mikey ran um, in the first round. 
round, you know, where Atlanta went deathless. Uh, she has a very <laughs> close range, high damage tank. She can sit in bubble and bully Winston out of it. And this was demonstrated actually in the very first fight of the map, where Mikey and friends on the defense of, Ho uh, not Hollywood, sorry, uh, Blizzard World, jumped in and they all exploded. This is due to the double flex support backline of the Zen Baptiste plus the D.Va micro missiles. And uh, D.Va's very good also at controlling flankers and off angles. So exactly what Saints were running in terms of Cassidy and Tracer. All, the, all Atlanta had to do was run slow and run things reactively in terms of let Mikey and friends uh, attack them first and then uh, fight them afterwards, never make the first move. And Atlanta played this composition perfectly, which led them to a, of course, a zero death first round and even a zero death uh, lip in the second round. So Atlanta played this so intelligently and just Mikey and friends, they, they tried to go for counters or they tried to change things up. Mikey went from Winston the ball, but it got a bit closer in the second round. They actually won fights, like you said, Zoe, but it wasn't <laughs> enough. Atlanta are just too good. Atlanta, man. Like, it's just every single player in that team is such a walking and talking highlight reel. And one of them is actually standing by for an interview now with Danny. We have Lip. All right. Hi, Lip. Uh, our player of the match, of course, Lip is joining me for the post-match interview. Lip, can you hear me? 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 아, 안 들리시나요? I am not hearing lip on my uh in, into my in here. So, uh let's give it a second. Lip lip 선수 한 번만 더 말씀해 볼수 있나요? 아. 아, there you go. I got it. 아, 드디어 들리네요. 어, 어, 순간 깜짝 놀랐습니다. 안 들리는 것 같아 가지고. 네, 들립니다. 들립니다. All right, guys, I got 아, lip. 네, right, let's just start this interview. Um, you know, right before, I mean, before I jump into the questions, I want to ask, uh, Blizzard World, that was a very quick win for the Atlanta Reign. And at the end of your attack, you guys, in, you, uh, Lip, especially, uh, uh, in the in-game chat, you wrote 0-0. Uh, what was, what was that all about? 자, 어, 이번 인터뷰 첫 번째 질문 들어가기 전에 제가 좀 이렇게 궁금한 게 있어서 이번에 블리자드 월드에서, 어, 이제 공격이 끝나고 리선스가 그 채팅창에다가 영영이라고 쓰셨는데 그 영영에 대한 의미가 뭐였는지 궁금합니다. 아 그거 그 저희 저희 쪽 팀원들은 이제 영대 쓰고 상대 팀은 영킬이어 가지고 그래서 영영이라고 한번 써봤어요. Alright, the reason why I wrote zero zero, it's uh the opponent got zero kills and we had zero death. Uh, I just wanted to let them know. So yeah, that was that was the reason why I wrote zero zero into the in-game chat. Uh, my next question question for you, Lip, is right now. Atlanta Reign is on a roll. You guys have won every single match and you guys are looking unstoppable. Do you think there is a team that could put a stop to the Atlanta Reign and the Pro-Am? 자, 지금 어떻게 보면은 Atlanta Reign이 Atlanta 팀이 지금 최강의 팀이라고 해도 어, 과언이 아닐 정도로 좋은 모습을 보여주고 계신데요. 어, 4대 0으로 지금 경기를 하나도 지지 않고 계속 쭉 좋은 모습을 보여주시고 있는데 어, 립 선수가 바, 보셨을 때는 이번 Pro-Am 토너, 토너먼트에서 어, 어떻게 보면은 지금 아틀란타를 이길 수 있는 팀이 있다고 생각을 하시나요? 어 아니요 저, 지금은 딱히 네, 아무도 안 보이는 것 같아요. 네, 이대로만 가면 좀 쉬운 대회가 되지 않을까 싶은데. 네. Uh, I want to say no. I'll probably say no as of right now. Uh, we are sort of on a roll, and if this continues, I believe it is going to be an easy tournament win for the Atlanta Reign. I also agree as well. Uh, now before I finally let you go, live my final question for you is. Um, one of our casters named Custa picked you as the MVP for the Pro Am uh, tournament. What do you think about that? 자, 마지막으로 이제 보내 드리기 전에 어, 저희 캐스터 중에 한 분이신 어, 커스터 님께서 립 선수가 이번 프로 엠 토너먼트에서 MVP가 될 거다라는 예상을 해, 어, 하셨는데 립 선수 어떻게 생각하시나요? 어, 그, 그 예상은 아주 잘하신 것 같은데 다른 분들은 이제 다른 선수 한것 같은데 그 예상은 좀 많이 틀려, 틀린 것 같아서 좀 실망인데요. 아 잠시만요. 다시 한 번만 말씀해 주실 수 있을까요? 죄송합니다. 아 이제 그 커스타님은 예상 잘하셨는데 나머지 분들도 예상하셨을 텐데 <웃음> 다른 선수들을 하셨던 거잖아요. 그러니까 못 맞추셔서 네. 좀 실망이라고요. 네. <웃음> 저도 저도 립 선수를 할거 그랬어요. 자 아무튼, alright. So Lip says that um you know Costa got the of course Costa got the right pick. Um it is going. To, I mean I feel like he got the right answer for that specific question. All the other casters and all the other analysts they didn't. So it really feels bad for them. Uh yeah, Lip. 
I, I sort of should have went with you as well. All right, I'm just going to leave it at that. Lip, again, big congratulations on the win and hope to talk to you soon. 자, 이걸로 인터뷰 마치도록 하겠습니다. 리선수, 감사합니다. 네, 감사합니다. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh. Lip. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't make MVP pick, so I can still say Lip. You, however, Danny, yeah, you, you already We're locked in fans. proper, so there's that. Did, Sorry. I no, I didn't. I did. I did Lip. No, I'm pretty sure it did not. Either way, uh, just uh, uh, yeah, just you know, we can we can roll back the tape. We do have we do have uh, receipts on that. Uh, I just also want to say that I don't think I ever heard Lip talk, which is weird considering they've been in the league for some time, and he might have the most pleasant voice in all of the Overwatch yeah. League. He has a very soothing voice. Isn't it That's so awesome. soothing? I want yeah. him to like read bedtime stories to me. Yeah. That's weird. And I'm Let's like, move I'm on. I'm like so happy to <laughs> finally get like time to interview him because he was, of course, with the league for a long time, but he was on the you know APAC site, the, so I exactly. didn't get to talk to him a lot. But now he's here. Exactly. And he's with here us. and ready to collect the trophies uh, with the performances he's putting on display right now. Now, we do have another great match coming our way. It might be the closest one of today as we're currently strolling through to Overwatch. Uh, Vancouver Titans and Trick Room will go up against each other. And that's going to be a fantastic, fantastic game. Or so we hope. So let's discuss the starting lineups here. Vancouver Titan, um, we we already Ooh, talked cool. at great length uh, about some of those players. After their first performance, though, Danny, who stood out to you? Sugar free! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think all of them deserve uh, credit because all of them were very impressive. Like, Punk, of course, on the tank role was really, really good on every single hero that he uh, was playing yesterday. Sugar Free as well was one of the... Uh, I think I, I think he's going to be one of my favorite players. Like, uh, again, I think I think there's so many new players that I've been seeing, and I'm saying that all of them are my favorites. But yes, yeah, Sugar Free is definitely... There That's all right. Well. You can have more than one favorite. That's all right. That Trick Room, as you see on your screens, the contenders team, uh, which... Uh, quite frankly turned heads yesterday as they took down the San Francisco Shock. Lemon, what do you want to see from them today? Oh boy, I think Trick Room have really downloaded this meta. I think they're going to be the team to watch in this Pro-Am and I think yesterday is what really convinced me from making Vindime Ajax to the typing that we saw of the C9s. They are a hilarious team, but also a smart one. They revolve a lot around their Rhine Bastion rush with Pummy. I guess doing more Bastion as of late, although he kind of floated around the Cassidy here and there. Um, we kind of said Bastion's like that new friendly hero. I'll see if he's sticks to that but if it's not going to be the Ryan Bastion rush it's going to be the infected Hammond uh maybe double flanker with the Sombra Tracer set up that's what dismantled the shock yesterday on Coliseo so uh we'll see if Trick Room can pull it off and get through it get out of groups because that win over shock might, might have just helped them do that True. Exactly. And I mean, it was a strong performance. So maybe Vancouver Titans needs all your energy out there. If you want to cheer for them, make sure to do so. Team support bundles are on sale now through April 11th. Get Kiriko, Ana, Baptiste, and a fancy little weapon charm in your favorite team skin, all for just 350 league tokens right now. Make sure to grab those. I do really, really dig the Vancouver Titans team colors in game. They're popping. Like, I like yep. it. I like it. Now, um, I, for this one, honestly struggled with a prediction. Just, I Same. don't know. Was I, because, Same. you know, when we get hyped up way too quickly. Like, takes one win and then everyone's like, ooh, they're going <laughs> to win it all. But I didn't want to fall for that trap. I wanted to go for, for, for the, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to fall for that trap. So I went with the Vancouver Titans, you know. Just steady wins the race. They weren't flashy, <laughs> um, but I I feel like they they delivered, and I just think they they do have they do have what it takes to take the W over Trick Room. That I disagree. Think? I think I think Vancouver <laughs> Titans, uh, you know, they were very shiny and bright as well. They were <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> sugar free. Sugar free was very you know uh, amusing. Anyways, I think I went with I think I went with Vancouver Titans. <laughs> it's like can you remember? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, because I was debating between Trick Room and Vancouver Titans. I think it, this is going to be a close match because Trick Room, of course, like uh, Lemon, you mentioned, they're coming in with a lot of confidence after beating San Francisco Shaw. But right now, I think I got to stick with Vancouver Titans, Punk, Sugar Free, all those people. 
I'm, yeah, I just, I'm I really finally... just trust and aspire and, and punk. Like, that's, I, I lay all my eggs in that basket. Lemon is hey, grinning, I though. I love those guys. I love those guys, too, man. I'm like a punk stan, you know, justice <laughs> for punk. I was there. I was rallying in the streets. But not today. I <sighs> went for Trick Room. I got to stick to my Tier 2 roots. I just believe it's not even about a player quality difference. It's like compositional understanding and just a meta understanding where I think Trick Room are just have studied and they've put the time in and they just look better in the meta. I think Vancouver have a lot of things to figure out. I think they have very high quality players. Sugar Free maybe still has to shake off the rust from having that one or two year break and then he'll truly be maybe proper level. <laughs> Levels. At least he was touted to be the next proper. Um, but Vancouver, I think it'll be a time thing before I give my th them my predictions, but Trick Room all the way for their meta understanding. I mean, this could be just a, to a coin toss. So uh, no wrong answers here until we see the end of the match that is. And for all the action, we once more bring in Hurix and Dor. Appreciate it, Zoe. But uh, yeah, Hurix, that's why we stay in Lemon Kiwi. You know why? Because I might have a wub in my head, but I got Trick Room in my heart, man. This team <laughs> has been there through and through from the old roots of them being G-Force with their whole ball one trick thing you to what they are now. You can't without saying like G-Force, man. The of St. Louis, my favorite Overwatch roster of all time. <laughs> and now look at where they are. The bones of it, granted, not really not really the, the flesh and organs, but there's a few of them in there playing up against the Vancouver Titans, a roster that I think looked pretty good yesterday. I think Zoe put it right, not flashy, but certainly very solid. Yeah, I think Titans definitely have a pretty bright future. I mean, you look at the bones there and the structures, I mean, it's great. I mean, obviously you have Lenny who is, or rather Sugar Free. Yeah, that's right. I know him as Lenny's whatever. Uh, you know, <laughs> an incredible player, especially when we get to see him on the Tracer. Well, guess what? This is a meta where we get to see that quite often. Aspire, on the other hand, as well, just bringing in uh, just so many different picks where he can be high impact, especially when we get to see him on Snipers at some point. Really looking forward to that. We have, of course, seen a little bit of the Hanzo. I think Titans really like that composition. I think that's another reason why they do like to play a little bit more of the Ram uh, composition as opposed to things like Reinhardt or the Dives because they can really play to the strengths of their, their players. But uh, yeah, Trick Room. <sighs> We're sleeping on something here. Hey, hey, he prefers the Ram to the Ryan, but you forget which Ryan he's playing into. This is this is no mere mortal on Reinhardt. This, this is, is someone different. Ryan. Infected fresh out of recess right now as well. Back again <laughs> on the ball. I mean, uh, this is this is where things got started. This exact same setup, right? I mean, coming up into Antarctic Peninsula. But something unique, I think, for Trick Room here is that they love to typically approach this map with the Ryan composition as opposed to what we see them coming out with now, which is a ton of chaos, a ton of disruption, all about bringing in that ball and just trying to cause, I mean, first of all, find that isolation cause some chaos and really just look for those single targets and that's exactly what they're doing here and they found one already i'm telling you man if there's anything i ever talk about this team with it's fluidity you think of normal dive teams they dive they reset they go for cooldowns they dive again trick room are always on their ability to to maintain pressure consistently with the ball comp is really what impresses me and that's what did it there all right what can titans do to turn this around obviously we do see spire here Swapping now going over to the Cassidy. They want that ability to, you know, help to mark those flankers. Right now, it was just Faith, and now with that that change, Aspire can help out against Bo and help out against Infected, but it's still not enough. <laughs> oh my God! How's this man alive? Get him an ambulance, please. <laughs> the health bar just won't go up. Oh God, yeah. No, you're definitely losing. That's effectively a dead tank, and the rest of his team should be picked off pretty promptly. But they've all just kind of absconded from the point. They, they are all absent, as Infected is from school right now, and trying to figure out where exactly to play. Vancouver Titans can't find them! They lost the game of hide-and-go-seek. Trick Room are, are all back alive and ready to play again. Trick Room, I mean, they can get back into this fight really quickly, and the big thing here is that Titans, they need to play off tempo. They really need to play off of that Nemesis and then go together and play into that brawl with the Ramatra, but it is just, the timings are impossible to gauge. Infected's just everywhere at once. You can't escape him. He is omniscient, all-knowing. Fortunately, it doesn't seem so easy for Trick Room to win the fight, leveraging their man being literally everywhere at once, but the dive is found unsuccessful. They can't get the wrap. 
on Titan. You're noticing they can't actually find the angles to surround them to make this dive happen. And that's largely due to Sugar Free and Aspire guarding those flanks. Yeah, I think that is a big thing that we saw from that swap. Remember, we talked about it already. Aspire going over to the Cassidy means that it doesn't just fall to Sugar Free or Faith to be able to match Boat or match Infected and try to see if they can find some damage there. Now Sugar Free is actually able to follow Infected in some cases, which helps really keep that pressure and apply it from engage to engage. Well, speaking of engages, one falls somewhat flat from Infected as the slam puts him onto the low ground. Finds the Tracer at low HP, though. Forces recalls. Trick Room still bolstered by the Sound Barrier. Looking for an engagement. Mines are in Deadeye. Oh my lord, we've pressed every Q button in the game, save for Pulse Bomb if we're Trick Room. I mean, the one in the fight, but was it worth it, Herix? I mean, a very... Uh, that was a big cost right there. That, we call that expensive for sure, especially coming into this next fight where you know Titans, I mean... They're going to have Annihilation. They're going to have the Sound Barrier. I mean, Titans should be in a great spot to just really force a brawl here however they really want to. As long as they can close that distance, get into someone, someone's face from Trick Room, they're going to be able to dish out a ton of pressure and not have to take too much themselves. Not uh, yet. Yeah. They bet the house on the last fight. Let's see if they're feeling lucky oh. right now. Though the pulse bomb, great! Oh, and it shuts down the Annihilation as well! Punk falls alongside the ultimate! Fight falling apart slowly for Titans, but Trick Room have to be able to capitalize. After losing Infected, it's not going to be so easy. And when tanks are gone, you know what I always say here, because it comes down to the DPS, and right now it's just Sugar Free and Aspire cleaning up. Great pick there coming in as well. Sugar Free just being able to help follow up from Aspire, applying pressure, forcing the recall out from Bo, and then Sugar Free, knowing that that cooldown was gone, can go ahead and take that duel freely, especially with some extra help. Now Titan's setting back up, especially with this, this Winston now, as you see from both sides as Infected also made that swap. This is a dire situation here for Trick Room already. Trick Room diving, they have to win before the ultimates come up, but the DPS ultimates are still there, and it's Infected who pays the price for it first, finding himself dead about as quickly as you could expect. I mean, we saw this one coming a couple fights ago. Trick Room invested everything into taking that point back and they paid the price. Vancouver came to claim. Huge right there, Punk. Calling it out a little bit, but I don't think Maple's gonna let that one slide. He just doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's the problem when you're playing against contenders teams is like, okay, Atlanta could talk a lot of smack last game, but like when you're talking smack in a close game, Contenders players, they don't care. They're immune to BM. It happens It's absurd. Much. They live yeah, through American right. Tornado. You can't hurt them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that play there as well, Sugar Free. Just able to clean things up. Again, the level of communication there is clearly solid for Titans. And this is where I think Trick Room can find a little bit more stability. We, t we talked about, you mm -hmm. know, that Bastion Ryan Rush composition. Well, here it is on display. And it's actually Titans. They're going to be going over to the ball themselves. And we have seen teams try this comp uh, composition against the Ryan Rush. And it's admittedly been hit or miss, despite the level of pressure and disruption that Clara can bring to the table. Yeah, I feel like we're watching a, a living version of the, the Spider-Man pointing meme right now because they, they've just swapped sides in terms of compositions. But I mean, in theory, I believe the Ryan comp to be better here, but Vancouver Titans clearly disagree with me. Trying to put everything on Sugar Free in the far end. It is a character he is notably good at, but is he good at it when he's on the wrong end of the Bastion? Ooh, good enough to live, but it's a Spire who goes down. Now, one of the things here with Trick Room is that they need something to kind of point at and then run at. I think Titans are doing a good, I mean, a good job of making sure that there isn't anything that they can just kind of go wheels down on, right? I mean, it's typically walls up, wheels down, and Trick Room can't really get that process going because Titans are just playing from every angle, and now they cause enough of that chaos that we talked about before where they're now able to get control of the fight, and you see Boat making that swap. Instead of Bummy being the Sombra, this time it's going to be Boat actually pulling that one out as Pummy goes over to the Cassidy. So a little bit more of that suppressing fire to be able to help to deal with Sugar Free, take him out of the sky, or even maybe apply some pressure to Faith, go forward, have that burst damage as well to deal with Punk. There's a lot more options that you get with this composition here now. Diamond in the back line for Aspire. He's got a Pulse Bomb in tow and all of Trick Room can smell it on him. Just threatening the option of the ultimate. Is it still still being zoned? It's Hanbei who falls first. They spend it too long looking at the tracer. Sugar Free flies above them and shuts them down. In fact, it's able to trade one back, but I think that's all it's going to be. 
a great fight coming in from Titans. Already su such a good start. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously a lot of fans behind Trick Room after what we saw transpire yesterday, but Titans looking to hush that one up if they can. Trick Room, though, it's not lost just yet. They're going to be coming into this next fight. Hello, hello and looking to get up into Titan's face. That's something that they have struggled with so far in this matchup, but Boat could help them out with that, applying that pressure from the backside, turning attention away, but, oh, it's oh. not it's not him that they need to worry about. You know, sometimes the barrage feels obvious, but it's good nevertheless. I mean, thrown in, there was nothing to shut down Sugar Free. The Somber is all the way back. Trick Room, I mean, we have to think, this is the, this is the exact swaps with the Sombra and the Cassidy that we saw them bring in the finals against Saints that brought them maps over Saints, but it's just not doing the same thing against Titans right now. Yeah, Trick Room struggling to get that same value we saw from them on this map back in the qualifiers, especially. Now they're looking to get in. They have to make sure that they play the point from here on out. That's going to make it a little bit more difficult. Uh, Pummy doesn't take the, the damage. He wanted the kill on Sugar Free. Oh Ooh. God, he gets it! Through the slimmest of angles, you could put a card through it. And with Sugar Free God, I mean, that that's really the problem solved for Trick Room. And now on top of that as well, Trick Room can actually help to stabilize themselves because of the fact that they're going to be able to set up on these defensive positions where they're going to be holding out. And Titans and Sh Sugar Free more specifically know that that's going to be the case. And we're actually seeing Sugar Free coming out on the Sojourn. That's something that we didn't really see at all yesterday. They're pulling that out here now. It's going to be a tough fight for Titans. They've got no ultimates into the EMP. And oh God, it's caught everybody. Infected charges from the back and kills two people with it. I mean, this is what we wanted out of his Reinhardt. And we're getting it. 50% on the point. Job's not done for Trick Room. To see what Spire can do with this Pulse Bomb. Perhaps they can stick someone in that back line, force a cooldown out like the Immortality, or maybe even just really focus down someone like Infected. Spire has been pretty good about this in the past, getting that set up for his team. And you see actually that shift now over to the Ramatra, which I do like, but this is hard to play into Trick Room, admittedly. Yeah, with, with the amp point, Amplication Matrix and the Shatter available, like, you can only shield one of those two things. In fact, the shield's gone. He backs up knowing that Infected has a Shatter. You cannot play without your shield cooldown if you're Punk, but you also need your shield cooldown to block two separate things. This is a, a no-win situation for Titans who are trying to play neutral into comp. They're just kind of never going to play neutral into. There's the Amplication Matrix up into the first shield. Infected, shield. in theory, just has a free Shatter right now. Titans are playing so passive because they know it's available, but that means more things are coming up in the meantime. Nano boost available for Crimzo, waiting for the shatter. Oh, it lands on the Ramatra. Nano boost saves his life, but it's a Spire who goes down for a Trick Room. Now it's just got to survive. They can survive the ultimates. They can come back with that 4v5 advantage, and they live. The health bars remain up. Trick Room remain alive, and now is their moment to strike back here. It's been just long enough, pushing forward into the Nemesis form of Punk. The hacks are out. The dead eyes available for Pummy. He storms forward, trying to dodge the railgun, and he gets Crimzo down. Trick Room have run back icebreaker oh man 199 stealing that one away it's just as soon as they get their Ooh. bearings as soon as they